So in previous lecture we have discussed about separated sets and uh, one or two results about that. You should remember what is separated set. So if you have a matrix space x comma d and if you have are subsets of x, then you will say they are separated when a intersection b bar is empty and other way around a bar intersection b is empty. That means no point of a is a limit point of b and no point of b is limit that is meant by that is what it means sets are separated okay when the sets are separated 100 percent they are destroyed converse is not true that also we should remember when two sets a and b are separated then their subsets are also separated these uh, results they are seen then whenever uh, distance between the two sets a and b is positive greater than zero then also the sets are separated and then we have done one result that if metric space is given and suppose A and B are subsets which are disjoint, then if A and B are both closed, if A and B are both closed, then they are separated and also if they are both open, they are separated. So all these are the results uh, we should uh, remember. Now next to that, we will prove one uh, very important theorem which will uh, take us to disconnect sets. So theorem states that uh, let X T be the matrix space xt be the matrix space okay and g be the subset of x and g is a union g is subset of x g is equal to a union g where a and b are separated where a and b are separated sets a and b are separated sets this is given. If G is open, then we are going to prove if G is open, if G is open, then uh, both uh, then A and B are then A and B are open. This is one result. And if G is closed, if G is closed. Then uh, A and B are closed. Then A and B are closed. How to prove this? Try to understand what is given. We are given G is subset of X and G is A and B. Okay. What are A and B? They are separated sets. So all these things that are given. We have to analyze first. Okay, G is subset of X. Okay, G is A union B. This is also very normal. A and B are separated. What do you mean by that? A intersection B bar is empty. A bar intersection B is empty. This is what we know when sets are separated. So all this data is given to you. Now we are also, we should, uh, here we are using G is open, G is closed. If G is open, this is also given. Then we have to do A and B are open. Okay. Now when G is open, what it means? Every uh, point of G is interior point of G. So if I start with any X belonging to G, then what will happen to X? It will be interior point of G. That means there will be some uh, radius, say R greater than 0, such that SX are will be subset of G. So all these things are given to you. Okay. So one by one we will try to prove. Uh, let, uh, basically these are the things which are common to both proofs that we are going to give for A and B. So X D is a matrix space that is there. G is subset of X that is also there. G is A union G that is also there. Okay. Then uh, A is separate, A and B separated. This is given. Okay. What does this imply? This implies uh, A intersection B bar is empty. And also A bar intersection B is empty. All these things are given. Now want to prove this first part. We want to prove if G is open. So that is also given. G is open. Okay. Now what I want to prove is to prove that uh, A and B are A and B are open. This is what I want to prove. Now if A is empty, what will happen? 
if they are healthy, then uh, it's obvious that G is equal to A union B that is given to you. So this means what? It will be empty union B, and so it is B. G is B, but B is G is open is given to you. G is open, so G is equal to B is also open. Empty set is also open. So then A and B are open is true. So trivially this is true. <coughs> so as empty and G, which is equal to B here, are open, it is true. So assume that A is not empty because when it is empty, it is very uh, trivial in this case. So if A is not empty, okay, if A is not empty, now what you mean by it is not empty? There is something X belonging to it. This implies X belongs to it. Okay, but what is now A? A union B G. So A is subset of A union B, which is G. So it implies x belongs to G also. But we know G is open. G is open given to you. So when x belongs to G, x is. So as x belongs to G, x is. Uh, what? Interior point of uh, G. X is interior point of G. Now what do you mean by this? There exists R greater than 0 such that. SXR is a subset of G. See, all these conclusions we can easily draw. SXR is subset of G for some R greater than G. But also we are given, what is given to you? Another thing that we know that these sets are separated. Okay, sets are separated. So A intersection B bar is empty. A intersection B bar is empty as A and B are separate as A and B are separate this is what is known to you ok so as X belongs to A and A intersection B bar is empty X does not belong to B bar the reality is this X does not belong to belong to B bar so what does it mean X does not belong to B bar. What does it mean? X is not limit point of B. Okay. So what I can say, there exists open sphere. Meaning of this, there exists open sphere. Uh, say S X R one, S X R one, with R one less than or equal to R, with R one less than or equal to R, and S X R one. Uh, intersection B, SXR1 intersection B is empty. It is empty. And when it is empty, it implies SXR1 in subset of A. Okay. But when you say SXR1 is subset of A, it implies X is uh, uh, A interior. X belongs to A interior. And X was what? See, we have started with. X belongs to A, any point, arbitrary point we have taken and you wrote X is an interior point of A. So what does this mean? Any arbitrary point, any arbitrary point X belonging to A is an interior point of A. Is an interior point of A. Okay. And that implies what? It implies A is over. Similarly, B is open. Similarly, B is open and B closed. Similarly, B is open and B closed. And so that, that proves the result that both A and B are open. Okay, so this is not difficult to uh, remember the proof. <coughs> Another thing is this that, see how previously used results we are using in the proof. Okay, so this is obvious result. Now we will go to second part. It is still more simple because now there what we need is we have already done results like this that when set is closed, 
uh, it's, uh, it, is, it is same as its complement, right? For closure. So when A is uh, when A is closed, A is equal to A bar, where A bar is the closure. Of that result we have to do done. Uh, another result that we know is if you have two substrates A and B, of a matrix space X comma D, then A union B bar is A bar union B bar. These are the results that we have. Okay. So now second part. B part. How it can be done? You have given G is closed. G is closed. Okay. And uh, also we know G is A union B. Now as G is closed, uh, okay, G is closed and uh, this is also given G is A union B. We have to prove uh, that A and B are closed. That is what we have to do. To prove that A and B are closed. Now what are the ways to prove that set is closed? One way is show that it contains all its limit points. Another way is show that its complement is open. Another way is to show that A is equal to A1. We will choose that way. So suppose I start with A bar. Now my aim is to prove A1 is A. Then A is closed. Okay. Now this A bar I can write as A bar intersection A bar union B bar. This is obvious result. This is simple set theory. Okay. This is simple set theory. But then this is what? This is A bar uh, intersection. A bar intersection what? It can be written as A bar union B bar is A union B bar. You know. Okay. But now as we are given G is A union B, G is A union B, G is equal to A union B, that is given. G is closed, G is closed, that means G bar is G. So that is what? A union B bar is same as A union B. But A union B bar is what? A bar union B bar. So A bar union B bar is A union B. All these things are there. Okay. So this A bar I can write as A bar intersection A bar union B bar. Because of all this. But this A bar union B bar is A union B as it is done there. So A bar intersection A union B. Now use the distributive property. So that gives you A bar intersection A. Union A bar intersection B. But we know that A bar intersection B is empty, so this is empty set. And this is A bar intersection, sorry, A bar intersection A here. Okay, now this is empty set, so what does all this mean? A bar intersection A, A is subset of A bar, so A bar intersection A is A. And uh, this is union, empty set, empty set. So finally we proved A bar is equal to A. Right? And as A bar is equal to A, it means what? Closure is equal to the set. We have proved all results. Set is closed. If and only if it is equal to its closure. And that proves this A is closed set. Okay? So now here I can say as A bar is equal to A, as A bar is equal to A, it implies A is closure set. Okay. Similarly, you can do B is closed, and so this proves a result. That now, what is see in a uh, outset? What we have proved that if you have an open set, sorry, if you have a set G, which is a union B, and when A and B are separated, so when the set is union of two separated sets, see this set is union of two separated sets, and if that set is open, then both of them are open. A union B are, A and B are open. And if the set is closed, both A and B are closed. This is what this means. Right? So, results like this, uh, always, uh, as I have told many times, you must be uh, good knowledge of previously proved results. Okay. Now, with all these uh, things, uh, one, one or two exercises I will give you. Take down this. First is, Suppose H comma D is the matrix space, okay, and A and B are separated sets, sorry, A and B are subsets of X. A B subsets of X. Okay, and suppose I give that uh, 
if A and B both closed, if A and B both closed, A and B are both closed the sets, prove that, prove that A minus B and B minus A are separate. So try to do this. And also this will work for both closed, okay? Or we can say open. So when A and B are both open sets, then also prove that A minus B and B minus A are separate. So what we have to do is this thing. This result we can use. Here, uh, this, you can use this result or you can use previous. Try to understand which result we can use. We are given that A and B both are closed sets. And uh, then A minus B and B minus A. Suppose you draw Venn diagrams, you can come to know. And this is just the hint that I am giving, not trying to do whole result. <coughs> this is suppose a matrix space, this is set A, this is set B. This is suppose A and B. Then what is A minus B? This is A minus B, this is B minus B. They are separated, we have to prove both when if, 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 if both if A and B are both closed then uh, A minus B, B minus A are separated. So try to understand what is required. Whenever I want to prove that uh, these are uh, uh, separated sets, then what I have to do? What is the target? Whenever I want to prove the sets are separated, then you have to prove that A minus B bar intersection B minus A is empty and converse. Okay, now you apply your mind and see what what uh, type of previous results we will be required to use. And try to prove this result. Such results can you prove, it uh, increases your confidence and we can solve more, more graded problem. This is not graded problem, this is a simple problem. So I have left it as an exercise. Try to do this. Okay, so now we are in a position to uh, define what is a disconnected set? What is disconnected set that we will try to define? <coughs> disconnected and connected sets. Disconnected and connected sets. This is what I have to define first. Okay. So well, now naturally, whenever I want to say that something is disconnected, what do you mean? See, suppose I have said this set and this is another set, upper matrix space. Uh, they are disconnected. There is nothing common, right? This is a general, general. Whenever uh, word disconnected, you will listen. This is what comes to your mind that there will be no connection, that there will be no intersection, or they never touch also to each other. Disconnected. That doesn't mean disjoint sets are disconnected. Sorry, disjoint sets uh, and disconnected sets and separated sets, all these things are uh, very crucial. You should understand the differences between these three, these three concepts. Disjoint, disconnected and separated. So by using the idea of separated sets, we are going to define what is disconnected sets. Because we always know that when the sets are separated, they are disjoint. Disjoint sets are not separated. We have seen examples also. And whenever you are saying the sets are separated, then you know that uh, any point of A is not a point, limit point of B else. And uh, uh, as a, uh, this, uh, the understanding of limit point is what? These are the points which are very near to that set. And this nearness is ex expressed, in, uh, expressed by using epsilon. That means epsilon greater than zero, when you take any epsilon greater than zero, and if you take uh, open sphere around the X, epsilon open sphere around x then uh, uh, if it contains a point of b other than x or infinitely many point at least one point of b other than x then you say that x is the limit point of b like that so these uh, ideas are uh, expressed mathematically by using epsilon delta etc but whenever you know epsilon and delta are used that means we are showing nearness idea we are talking about nearness idea so here now we will uh, say that a set is disconnected, two sets. 
So here we will say definition. Definition. Uh, matrix space x comma d is matrix space x comma d is uh, disconnected. Disconnected. If x can be expressed as the union of if x can be expressed as union of two non-empty two non-empty separated sets two non-empty separated sets two non-empty separated sets okay so see everything is here important what we are saying x can be expressed as union of two non-empty separated sets so they should they must be non-empty that is one thing okay and uh, union of two non-empty separated sets that is if i can express x as a union b where what should be the qualities of a and b a is not empty b is also not empty a and b separated a and b separated what does it mean it means you have uh, a intersection b bar is empty and b bar intersection b is also empty if this happens you will say uh, matrix space is uh, on the that side x is disconnected okay this is what it means now uh, if you take uh, say uh, matrix space uh, r real line we, we are going to prove afterwards that real r is a connected set okay but uh, you can see you can express r as you cannot express actually r you cannot express as union of two non empty separated sets you can feel this okay because you know that uh, if you have uh, uh, say uh, if you check r as if you check r if you express r as say minus infinity to say zero closed okay and uh, union zero to infinity you have expressed this r but these are not separated first thing is limit point of this is zero limit point of it. Well, open interval when you check ab open interval always we have uh, said that a and b both are limit points they are they may not be the points of the set but they are limit points so this zero is a limit point of this set and it belongs to this set okay so they are not separated so and another thing is this is just one example this doesn't prove that r is connected you have to uh, prove some results and then you will come to uh, actual proof of r is connected etc but this is the just one example again. So this is defined what is meant by disconnected sets, and x is connected. X is connected if it is not disconnected. If it is not disconnected, x is connected if it is not disconnected. This is the uh, obvious result. When it is not disconnected, it is connected. So one uh, characterization we will give of these disconnected sets. So the theorem states like this. This is an important theorem now about disconnected sets. So let x comma d be the matrix space. X comma d be matrix space. Okay. Uh, the following statements are equivalent. Then following statements. Following statements are equivalent. Now, what are those statements? One by one, we will note down. First is uh, x comma d is disconnected. X comma d is uh, disconnected. 
सेकंडली एक्स इज एक्सप्रेसिबल एक्स इज एक्सप्रेसिबल एज यूनियन ऑफ टू नॉन एंटी डिस Union of two non-empty disjoint closed sets. Third thing is X is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint open sets. And finally, uh, X is uh, there exists a non-empty proper subset of X. There exists non-empty proper subset of X, which is both open and closed. Which is both open and closed. This is the uh, statement, and we want to prove these are equivalent statements. And there are various ways to prove such results. First, you can prove that one implies two, then two implies three, three implies four, four implies one. That can be one way to prove equivalence. Other ways, you just prove them like that. So we can here prove one implies two and two implies one. Okay, then you can prove one implies three, three implies one, etc. So many such ways are there. We are going to follow this way. We will first do one implies two and two implies one. Okay, so uh, proof. See, I want to prove one implies two and two implies one. Also, we want to prove one implies three and three implies one. Both these things. Now how it can be done? See, one by one. So once you want to prove one implies two, what we are uh, doing here is x is uh, x is disconnected. We are assuming, and we want to prove x is expressible as union of two non-empty uh, disjoint closed sets. Now you see, you have proved already uh, two results. The one result that we have proved is we will see that previous star suppose this is the first star. We have proved this result that if X T is a metric space, X T B metric space, A and B subsets of X. Just now we have proved these two results. A and B are subsets of X, which are disjoint, disjoint subsets of X. Then, then uh, we have proved that if A and B are both closed, first thing. A and B both closed. Implies A and B separated. And secondly, A and B both open. It implies A and B separated. This is the result that we have proved, and another result also that we proved. Uh, it is other way out. If G is open, means if G is subset of X, X comma G is the metric space. G is subset of X. G is equal to A union B. G is equal to A union B. A B separated. Okay, A and B are separated. Now we have proved A part. G is open. G is open. Uh, then both A and B are open. It implies A B are open. A and B open. And G is closed. G is closed. It implies A and B are closed. These are two results that we have proved. Now, can you sense that we can use these two results to establish this equivalence? One implies two. Two implies one. One implies three. How it is done? 
see we are we are we are first given that x is a disconnected metal space what do you mean by it is disconnected just now we have written definition when you say that metal space is disconnected you can express it as how you can express what is the definition that also i will write here what is meant by disconnected disconnected means what x can be expressed as x is x is expressible as union of union of two what is definition of disconnected union of two non empty separated sets union of two non empty separated non empty separated sets So whenever I say X is a disconnected, disconnected, it is that. So I can write X as A union B, where how are A, A, B are non-empty. Okay, and A and B separated. Now using this three, can you establish one implies two and two implies one? Whenever I am given that X is disconnected, suppose I want to prove one implies two, so I will start with this. X is disconnected. That means this X can be expressed as A union B, where A and B are non-empty separated sets. Okay. Now here we are saying, here we are saying that when G is subset of X, G is A union B, A and B separated. Same situation is here now. X is A union B. And X itself, a metal space. This is a metal space. So that G, whatever G we have taken in this uh, set, will be replaced by X. And uh, what is the quality of G? G is subset of X. So X is also subset of X. Every set is subset of itself. Another thing is that G. Suppose I am given G is open, then I can say whenever all these things are happening, G is A union B. What just I am doing is replacing G by X. So that condition, if G is a union B is here, X is a union B. Additionally, uh, we know that X being a metal space, it is both open and closed. Any metal space, you know that uh, in a, any metal space, which are the two sets which are always open and closed, empty set is both open and closed always, and X itself is open and closed. So X is open. So here we require G is open implies A and B are open. So when X is open, A and B are separated. As per the requirement, so what does that this theorem tells you? Both A and B are open. Okay, that means what X is expressible as two open union of two open sets. So that follows. X is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint, uh, sorry, this set disjoint open sets. And if you use this result, G is closed. X also is a closed set. In any metric space, you know that X is both open and closed. So X is closed set. So use this result. X is closed. A and B are closed. As X is expressed as A union B as per this requirement, G is A union B. Here X is A union B. A and B are separated. That also we are given. So when G is closed, A and B are closed. So when X is closed, A and B are closed. So this this follows the first rule. One implies two. X is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint sets. Also one implies three follows. X is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint. Open sets because of this. Now, how to prove converse part? Suppose I am given that x is x is now I have already proved one implies two, one implies three. Now I want to prove two implies one. What is given in that two implies one means what? We are uh, saying that x is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint closed sets. X is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint closed sets. Okay. Then what I want to prove? X is disconnected. Use this result now. See what is proved here. If A and B are both closed, here what is given? X is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint closed sets. So I am writing X as A union B. How are those A and B non-empty disjoint closed sets? Non-empty disjoint closed sets. So here what do you want? A and B subsets of a disjoint. Non-empty disjoint closed sets. Both A and B are closed. Then we know A and B are separated. So this theorem tells you that when X is equal to A union B, okay, how are those A and B? See, it is given 
that A and B are non-empty disjoint closed sets. So all the conditions of this theorem are satisfied. And when A and B both closed, it implies A and B are separated. So what I know, X is expressible as non-empty uh, separated sets, union of non-empty separated sets. Uh, see, whenever X is expressible as union of two non-empty separated sets, it is disconnected. So X is disconnected. Okay. Now if I want to prove the other part, 3 implies 1, then what? 3 implies 1 is also obvious. Because now you have given that X is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint open sets. Right? Now use again this result. When both A and B are open, we know A and B are separate. Okay? A B subsets of X disjoint and A and B both open. So all these conditions are here. And so by using this, what I can say is A union B. X is expressible as A union B where both A and B are uh, separated. What does it mean? Because of this result, when you know A and B are both open, as for here, we know that uh, they are separated. So I know that X is expressed as a union of non empty separated sets, and that implies it is disconnected. So just using these three things, you try to write this proof. I have explained everything how to use. See, whenever I want to prove 1 implies 3 and 1 implies 2, you are using this result. Okay? And whenever you want to prove 2 implies 1 and 3 implies 1, we are using this result. And in both cases, you must know the definition of disconnected set. Because where we are assuming set is disconnected, and here you are proving set is disconnected. When you want to prove 1 implies 2 and 1 implies 3, your assumption is X is disconnected. So this definition you can uh, assume. And conversely, when you want to prove, then you have to prove set uh, that metal space is disconnected. So you are going to prove this. So anyway, what is meant by uh, metric is metal space is disconnected? You must know. <coughs> disconnected is union of non-empty separated sets. You must be able to express it. <coughs> and see, it is beyond mathematics. It is very obvious that something when it is disconnected, you can express it as a union. But those union, uh, whatever sets are there in union, they must be separated. See, whenever you use the word separated, you have one feeling that there is nothing common. Right? That means uh, they must be non empty, very obvious. And all such things, uh, always by just common sense, you can understand all such things. Now, what about the next part? That is, we have to actually prove now 1 implies 2, 2 implies uh, 1, we have proved. 1 implies 3, 3 implies 1, we have proved. So, 1, 2, 3 are equivalent. Now, what about this now? 1 implies 4, I want to establish. Okay, now that also is not uh, difficult to do. So now what we have to do is 1 implies 2 and 2 implies 1. 1 implies 3 and 3 implies 1. This is proof. Now we want to establish 1 to 3 are equivalent because of this. Now we want to establish that. Uh, 3 and 4 are equivalent. If you prove 3 and 4 are equivalent, 3 and 4, suppose I prove they are, they are equivalent, then everything is equivalent. Because here 1 implies 2, okay, then what? Here 1 implies 2, then we have also 2 implies 1, 1 implies 3. So see, 2 implies 1 and 1 implies 3 means 2 implies 3. So that is also proved. So these two are equivalent. And then now we will prove 3 implies 4 and 4 implies 3. So again what happens? 3 implies 1 and 1 implies 2. So everything is equivalent. So now it is to be established that uh, equivalence of 3 and 4. So what is uh, given in 3 or what is given in 4? Suppose I start with whatever is given in 4. Uh, that I am given that there exists non-empty proper subset of X which is both open and closed. Okay. So I will start with that. This uh, we will write in details because already this this two one implies and implied by two and one implies and implied by three you can use these three uh, things and prove the result okay but now I would like to establish the equivalence of three and four we would like to establish the equivalence of three and four so how to do that three and four so first I will assume four Okay, so our plan is to prove that 3 if and only 4. 
So we will start with 4. So as shown, as shown 4. Now when you assume 4, what it means? There exists non empty proper subset. So let A be A be non empty proper subset. Uh, A uh, sorry, proper subset of X. A B non empty proper subset of X, which is which is both open and closed which is both open and closed A, B, non-empty, proper subset of X which is both open and closed ok now when this is there uh, what I can then do is B is equal to X minus A ok so complement of A ok now what is equal to you A is both open and closed so B is what? Suppose I take A is open or A is closed, then what is B? A is closed. So what is B? B is open. B is open. And uh, immediately I can come to know that X is equal to what? No. A union B. Because B is nothing but complement of A. So A and A complement. So this is open set. This is also open. So what and also uh, A and B uh, being the means uh, B is a complement of A. So what does it imply? See as B is complement of A. So definitely they are uh, uh, disjoint. So A intersection B and B obviously. And so this tells you that you have expressed A as union of two non-empty disjoint open sets. See, so here x is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint open sets. You have already proved three implies one, so it is disconnected. So that is what four implies three is proved. This means that you have expressed x as union of two non-empty disjoint open sets. This, and then this implies one. So actually we are not interested in proving four implies one. Three implies one is already done, so we are proving four implies three, and that is done. Okay, so here we have proved, so proved that, proved that x is expressible as, x is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint open sets. So we establish 4 implies so uh, 3 is proof. Now conversely, conversely I have to uh, prove this, when 3 is given I have to prove 4. So what is given to me, x is expressible as union of two non-empty disjoint open sets and I want to prove this, there exists non-empty proper subset of x which is both open and closed. So how to do that? How to do that? Now 3 uh, is given to you and I want to establish this result number 4. So it is also a very uh, simple thing. Uh, when you say C is true, that result 3 is true, 3 is true, 3 implies what? X is equal to A union B x is equal to a union b where a and b are disjoint a and b are disjoint non-empty open sets this is given to you and you can see here that when x is written like this you can take uh, b as what B is x minus a then. B is x minus a. And uh, B, uh, see, uh, A is what? A and B are disjoint open sets, right? As A is open, it implies B 
which is equal to x minus a is closed. Okay, so now a is open also, a is closed also. A is open implies uh, uh, okay, we, we have to prove both a and b are both a is set uh, which is both open and closed. So instead of saying b is equal to x minus a, uh, you can also say that a is equal to because b is equal to x minus a. a that means what? A is what? A is you can write as x minus b. Okay, and b uh, opens. B is open, so x minus b is closed, so a is closed. And so what has happened to the set A? The set A is now both open and closed. Okay, set A is both open and closed. A is both open and closed. So that implies uh, that implies fourth four part is closed. So, 4h closed, 4h closed. So now we have established 1 implies, means 1 if and only if 2, 1 if and only if 3, and also we have proved 3 if and only if 4. And that means what? Uh, all the four statements that we have proved are equivalent. So this completes the proof of the theorem. See how uh, we have used previous results again. We have used definition of uh, disconnected set and also those two results that when g is equal to a union b both and g is open that result and uh, another result uh, already those results were written and see how effectively we have used all the previous results and that gives you the final answer. Okay. So another thing that you have understood here, it is always not necessary that 1, 2, 3, 4, when I want to do they are equivalent. 1 implies 2, 2 implies 3, 3 implies 4, 4 implies 1 is one way. But we can establish that case also. Here I have proved 1 and 2 are equivalent, 1 and 3 are equivalent, and we proved 3 and 4 are equivalent. So such results when you prove, then it gives you clear that idea of how previously proved results we are using, how we should argue what is given to you, how to prove those results, how to prove that result, when you want to prove something, what is expected to do actually. All such uh, training we get to our mind whenever such results are proved. And uh, this is now the definition. Uh, we have also, we have done uh, disconnected sets. And not only that, we have proved this uh, theorem, which is the characterization of disconnected sets. So when you will say the set is disconnected, one thing is there, the definition we have written that you can express them as union of two non empty separated sets. But in general, whenever I say that set is disconnected, then what? Then it means you can express it as union of two non empty disjoint open sets, union of two non empty disjoint closed sets, or you can find the set in a matrix space, uh, in a discrete, in a type matrix space, which is both open and closed. If this happens, then you will say the matrix space is disconnected. So the feeling of the word disconnected is expressed like this. That you can express that uh, set X as a union of what? Two sets. How are those two sets? Either they will be non-empty, disjoint, both over. Non-empty, disjoint, both closed. Okay. And all these things also imply that uh, there will be one set in that matrix space which is both open and closed, then also it happens, uh, it, it, it can be proved that matrix space is disconnected. So all these equivalent statements you can use as a definition of disconnected sets. This is the importance of doing uh, results like this. These are characterizations of that idea. So when you say set is disconnected, any of these three statements remaining, you can use as a definition because we have proved equivalence of Okay, so I think you have understood this, whatever today we have done is very important and uh, two or three results that we have put and this equivalence uh, will be very important concept and we will use all these ideas. Whenever state is disconnected, we will use all these ideas and prove further results. Thank you.